In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our inner Tanathon, let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord in his strength. Constantly seek his faith. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Good morning and welcome. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. We invoke your mercy in humble prayer, O Lord. You may cause us, your servants, corrected by penance and schooled by good works, to persevere sincerely in your commands and come safely to the Paschal festivities through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a bull and calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I see how stiff necked this people is. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with such great power and with, such, with so strong a hand? Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent, he brought them out, that he might kill them in the mountains and exterminate them from the face of the earth. Let your brazen wrath die down. Relent in your punishing your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and all this land that I promised. I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. Through the Lord, thanks be to God. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Our fathers have made a calf in Harab and adored a molten image. They exchanged their glory the image of the grass eating bullock. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. They forgot the God who had saved them, who had done great deeds in Egypt, wondrous deeds in the land of Ham, terrible things in the Red Sea. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Then he spoke of exterminating them, but Moses had chosen one, who stood him in the breach, turned back to his destructive wrath. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord.
Jesus said to the Jews, I will testify on my own behalf. My testimony is not true. But there is another who testifies on my behalf. And I know the testimony he gives on my behalf is true. You sent a mercenary to John, and he testified to the truth. I do not accept human testimony, but I say this so you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and for a while you were content to rejoice in its light, but I have testimony greater than John's. The works the Father gave me to accomplish, these works that I performed to testify on my behalf, the Father has sent me. Moreover, the Father who sent me has testified on my behalf, but you have never heard this voice nor seen his form. And you do not have his word remaining in you, because you do not believe in the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures, because you think you have eternal life through them. Even they testify on my behalf. But you do not want to come to have but you do not want to come to me to have life. I do not accept him in praise. Moreover, I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I came in the name of my Father, but you did not accept me. Yet if another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept praise from one another and do not seek the praise that comes from the only God? Do not think that I will accursed you before the Father. The one who will curse you is Moses, in whom you have placed your hope. For if you had believed Moses, yet you would have believed me, because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe in his writings, how will you believe my words? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do not believe his writing. How will you believe my words? Wow. You know, it, it's really interesting all the struggle that we face and all the challenges. And, and we say life is so hard and life deals with so many things that are so hard and we have no idea how we're going to do them, how we're going to get through them. But the hardest thing is believe. Is to believe. And we say we believe, and we believe, and we believe, but doubt, and doubt, and doubt, and doubt coming in. So how will you believe my word? What does that mean? Because if we truly, truly believe, there's no fear, there's no anxiety, no tension. And this endurance anathon will come alive. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord in his strength. Constantly seek his face. You know, we have such a disordered reality of life. A disordered reality of how to live. But it's every time that we find Jesus, every time we find his truth, every time we seek his face, our hearts, our hearts should rejoice. But yet, when things are right, or when things are fixed, or when things are this, or when whatever, and then something else comes. But just imagine, just imagine if we really believe every single thing, everything. Otherwise, I love it. He just, he just gets it. He 
You search the scriptures because you think you have eternal life through them. Even they testify on my behalf. But you don't want to come to me to have life. I don't accept human praise. I mean, this is as real, as real as it gets. You know, we just think, okay, I've opened my Bible, I read something, I'm good right now. Or it's just mechanical and it's motion and it's it's nothing. Or sometimes it's even just kind of sitting back in a way and whatever. But how will you believe? How will you believe? That the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice, turn to the Lord in his strength, constantly seek his name. Trusting in God's providence and his mercy and in his divine love, we now turn our prayers and petitions before the very throne of grace. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray for Archbishop George Lucas. We pray for all of our bishops, all of our priests, all deacons, all religious, all laity, and our entire church. As we are searching and trying to get our way through this pandemic, that we will believe, that we will believe in Jesus Christ, that every breath of that belief, we will find the joy and happiness and peace that we need to navigate through all of this. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our awesome medical team those in the front lines attacking this coronavirus every day, feared and afraid that they're going to get the virus or bring it home to their families or just all the stress and demands and the long hours, the lack of supplies and all the stress put on our medical team. But they know the comfort and love and support and goodness of our prayers. We pray for those working on a vaccine right now that they'll find an end and a cure for the coronavirus. And we pray for our nation, that we find our way through all of this, and that we too look to God for wisdom and light and strength. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the greatest evil that we face on this American soil, the legalization of abortion. We pray for an end to this evil act. We pray for a greater respect of all life, from a natural birth to a natural death. For this we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. I pray for those that are watching online, that have been away from the church for a while, and are now coming and watching daily, this daily Mass. I pray for their beautiful hearts. I pray in gratitude and thanksgiving to God to be able to reach out to their hearts. And I pray that his word and his message and his strength right now will lead them back to God's holy church. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I pray for our three beautiful parishes of St. Peter's, St. Joseph's, and St. Patrick's. I pray that as we navigate these changing times, that we don't do it in fear and anxiety and drama and anger and resentment. That we embrace what we have to face in faith, in hope, in love, in confidence of Jesus Christ. That every single parishioner, every parishioner, will do what they can do to help us through these challenging times. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I pray for Archbishop Lucas with special prayers today. For all the demands and stress and pressure he has put upon them, navigating through two dioceses at this time, trying to find the way and the truth and all the burdens he is facing. That he too will constantly seek the face of the Lord and rejoice in his goodness. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I offer prayers to our priests throughout the entire world. Especially those right now that are feeling a heavy sense of burden of what to do. How to keep these parishes going and alive and vibrant and 
finances and just all the stress and demands in this different way they're living out their priesthood at this time. That the good Lord will calm their fears, the good Lord will bring them strength and peace, and they too will find hope and confidence in Jesus Christ. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our farmers as they anxiously get ready for the spring season, for great faith and great hope and great trust in God. The good Lord will give them all they need for a good, healthy crop and a fair wage for the grain. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for our beautiful military. May Almighty God bless these holy men and women. And we especially pray for those that are trapped on deployments now and in different parts of this world where they can't get home and they've extended deployments and kids are crying and sad and they want to see their mom and dad and they're excited for them to come home and just all the pressure and demand these poor families are suffering through at this time. That the goodness of the Lord will be with their beautiful hearts. These little children's anxiety and fear and sadness will be calmed in the love of Christ and for great strength and for great guidance for our beautiful military. We pray for our veterans, and we pray in a most blessed way for the brave women and men that served our nation and perished, that their souls are resting in the hands of Almighty God. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray also for our heroes that died trying to care for the sick. They went right into the trenches and were infected with the virus, and the virus took their lives. My friends, there's no greater life, no greater love, than to lay down your life for your friends, for those you care and trust. And how blessed and how graced we are to be realizing that. And we pray for those beautiful souls. We pray for those that aren't able to have funerals at this time, can't gather with family due to all the restrictions and all the heartache it brings. But those families know that we are grateful and we are thankful and we are with them in prayer and love. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray so beautifully for their sick, those lonely and afraid in nursing homes, hospitals, and can't even have a parent or family member or anyone near them at this time. God bless them as they lay there, that they will get all the help and aid and love they need. They're finding the strength and comfort of Jesus Christ, and that a good and faithful priest will get to the dying to get them anointed and give them a pardon and give them light and peace and grace to be God this very day. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all your thoughts and all your prayers and all your petitions you so beautifully hold this beautiful morning in the beautiful silence of your beautiful heart. this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, good and gracious, good and gracious, I pray for every soul out there, and I pray for those watching this Mass, and whatever resistance is in their heart at the time, whatever is Binding them, or holding them down, or saying it's so hard to know your love, know your goodness, know your grace, that it just all shatters. All shatters. And every time we make that sign of the cross, every time we lift our brows to you, that we find that love and that strength, and that it's the grace, the driving force, leading us through what we face every hour. In a society in a world of panic and chaos and fear and anxiety and drama and hoarding and you name it, sin all around us, we want a different path. We want a different way. We want a different light. And I just pray that every soul desiring that will find that and let go of that resistance and really believe and trust and face everything rejoicing in your goodness and your grace. We make all of these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. The divine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we offer and sacrifice, may cleanse us in our frailty from every evil, and always grant us your protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and in a willingly end to his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins from the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion Anathon, I will place my law within them, and I will write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people, says the Lord. Let us pray. In this sacrament we receive, purify us, we pray, O Lord, and grant your servants freedom from all blame, and those bound by a guilty conscience may glory in the fullness of heavenly remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for Almighty God's blessing. O God, protector of all who hope in you, bless your people, keep them safe, 
defend them, prepare them, that free from sin and safe from the enemy, they may persevere always in your love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple announcements. Just continue to do the good you're doing. Uh, one thing I've noticed is we check on people and just making sure they're getting the word and spreading the news and things. It's a, a difficult time for us to get everything out. And we're working on a letter to go out to all parishioners, and there'll be some special instructions this week in my bulletin article, which I'm still working on because everything's changing, but I'll be working on it as soon as Mass is over today. And again, just again, that continual calling and checking on people I've seen very helpful and very good, and just kind of helping them to get the word out. And if there's somebody that's not on Facebook that wants to see the Daily Mass, again, if they go to YouTube, type Ponca Newcastle Jackson in the search engine, they've got to type all three in, uh, and it will be there. It's usually about an hour after. Instructions, how will the Holy Week and all those things that are coming, and Palm Sunday, and still working on a confession reality. So, again, they don't want any public gatherings, no more than gathering people. Uh, that's a big thing to really stop the spread of this virus, and, and no more than 10 people. And so, we're working and we're processing and we're looking and trying to do our best. And again, thank you for your prayers and all the encouragement you bring. And the Almighty God bless you now, in the name of the Father. And of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace and the love.